Okay, that's right. As you can see in today's video, we are going to be going over how to determine the force on a current carrying wire that's in a magnetic field. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now here's the equation, but this is not the equation we use to calculate the force on a wire. This is the equation that we used in the previous video to determine the force on a charge that's moving through a magnetic field, because this is Q for charge, V for velocity, B for magnetic field. So this is the equation we use to figure out or to determine the magnitude of the force on a charge. We can derive the equation for the magnitude of the force on a wire from this equation because we know that V is the velocity and the velocity is the distance divided by the time. Right? QVB, charge, velocity, and magnetic field. V is velocity and that's the distance times the time. So this is the distance that the charges would be going, since we're talking about a wire now, it's actually the length of the wire. And this is the time that it would take for those charges to go through that length of wire. And we're gonna substitute that into this equation. So now we have the force on the wire is equal to Q times the length of the wire divided by the time and times the magnetic field. And sine of theta is the angle between the wire and the magnetic field, which we'll talk about in a moment. But now I can rearrange this equation a little bit like this, or like this, so I get the force is equal to Q divided by T. I just simply took the uh, T and moved it over because it's divided by the whole thing, really, uh, or it's divided into the whole thing. So this is Q divided by T times length times the magnetic field, and Q divided by T is simply the current. So the equation that we use to determine the magnitude of the force on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field is simply the force is equal to the current times the length of the wire times B, the magnetic field strength, times the angle, the sine of the angle between the wire and the magnetic field. And let's just go over that in a little bit more detail really quickly. F, of course, is the force. The force would be measured in Newtons. I is the current. The current would be measured in amperes. L is the length of the wire. It's the length of the wire or the section of the wire that's inside the magnetic field. It has to be in meters, convert from centimeters to meters. B is the magnetic field strength, which we measure in Teslas. And of course, theta is the angle between the wire and the magnetic field. All right, let's do a quick, relatively straightforward problem here. We want to know the force on the wire. So we have a, what's it say here? It says, says there's a 20 centimeter long wire. And that whole centimeter, 20 centimeters is in a, uh, has a current in it. Well, the current in the wire is 15 amperes. And the wire, that 20 centimeters of wire, is inside a magnetic field. And the magnetic field is directed into the page. And the magnetic field has a strength of 1.2 Teslas. And the angle between the wire and the magnetic field is 90 degrees. So we can draw that. I think it's good to just draw a quick little picture. And we want to know what is the direction and the magnitude of the force. So we have the current. The current is flowing from left to right across your page. And we have the magnetic field, which we draw as the magnetic field with the circles with the X's, means the magnetic field is directed into the page. And we want to know what is the direction and the magnitude of the force. Well, let's get the magnitude out of the way. That's pretty straightforward. We just get our equation out. Force is equal to I, L, and B, sine of theta. Just plug the values in, 15 amperes. Remember, it converts centimeters to meters. 20 centimeters is 0 0.2 meters. 1.2 Teslas times the sine of 90. The sine of 90 is 1. So when we do all that, we get that the force, the magnitude of the force on that wire is 3.6 newtons. Now, what about the direction of the force? Now, in order to get the direction of the force, we're going to have to use our right hand rule. This is my right hand. We take the thumb and we point it in the direction of the current. We take our fingers and we point them in the direction of the magnetic field. And then we take our palm and our palm shows us the direction of the force. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my right hand. I'm going to point my thumb to the right. Okay, this is my thumb is pointing to the right. You can do the same thing. Hold your hand up in front of you like this. Point your thumb to the right. Left from left to right is the current. The magnetic field, my fingers are the magnetic field, they go into the page, and therefore my palm is facing up, and that means that the force on that wire is up on that page like that. Okay, I just want to point out quickly that when we start talking about motors and generators, this is kind of the beginning of the motor principle because we have an electric current, and we're converting that current into 
mechanical motion, and that's what motors do. They convert electric current into mechanical motion. You can think of that as a loop of wire that would be inside of a motor. Okay, let's do another problem. This one's a little bit more interesting, I think. Once again, we have a, a wire. In this case, we have a loop of wire, a single loop of wire, and the current is flowing counterclockwise from the positive charge, from the, sorry, from the positive end through the wire and to the negative terminal. Remember, current is defined as the flow of positive charge, and the current in this case is 0.35 amperes. Uh, we have a magnetic field. We wanna know what the magnetic field strength is, and then we know that the force on the wire is 3.75 times 10 to the minus two newtons. And the distance across this uh, loop of wire is 20 centimeters. Now what we're gonna do is we wanna know the magnetic field. <clears throat> we wanna know the magnetic field strength. And we are going to use the same equation and we're gonna rearrange this equation for B and that gives us that B, the magnetic field strength is equal to the force divided by the current times the length. Now it gives us the force, it tells us what the force is, but I think it's a little bit interesting just to look at the force on each side of that loop of wire and talk about why that's the force and what the force really is and the net force on that loop of wire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out, using my right hand again, the direction on the force on each side of that wire, because there's a force on this side, there's a force on this side, and there's a force on that side of that loop of wire. Of course, we'll do this side first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our right hand, take our thumb again and point it down. Now remember the magnetic field, those dots mean the magnetic field is coming out of the page. So now I gotta kind of turn my hand towards myself like this, thumb down, magnetic field out. That means the force is to the left. So that's to the left and I'm gonna show the force on that side of that loop like that. That's the force is to the left. Now on the bottom, once again, I'm gonna take my thumb, I'm gonna point my thumb to the right, but I wanna make the magnetic field come out of the page, so now I gotta turn my hand over like this. Okay, you gotta do a little kind of little uh, gymnastics here. My thumb is still pointing to the right, the magnetic field is out of the page, and that means that the force is down like that. So on the bottom, the direction of the force is down. Okay, on the last side over here, once again, the current is, not once again, but in this case, the current is flowing up. So I point my thumb up, but now my fingers are going into the page. I want them coming out of the page. I gotta turn my hand over like this again. Okay, like this actually, you gotta be careful to do it the right way. Okay, finger, thumb up, magnetic field out. So I have my thumb up, have my fingers out, and that means the force is to the right, okay? So we did say that there is a force on each side of that wire. And the question is for the force here, are we gonna then add this up three times or multiply this by three? Or are we just gonna use one? Now what we see here is that the force on this side is to the left, the force on this side is to the right. We have equal forces pointing in opposite directions and they cancel each other out. So the net force, there are forces there, but the net force is pointing down. Okay, so all we're gonna do is for the magnetic field, we're gonna put 3.75 times 10 to the minus two newtons. Don't multiply it by three. Then we're gonna divide that by the current, 0.35 amperes, times the length. Now the length is 0.2 because this is the only side that is feeling that force and that side is 20 centimeters long, 0.2 meters, and we get that the magnetic field strength in this case is 0.54 Teslas. Okay, I think that's interesting to think about the net force and you know how you calculate the force or determine the force on each side of that loop of wire. So there you go, that's how you determine the direction and the magnitude of a force on a wire that's carrying a current inside of a magnetic field. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Uh, let's see, leave me a thumbs up for this video or give me a thumbs up for this video. Then leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.